are online classes effective? Do our kids learn more through the online medium or through the physical medium? Are the house, um, are the hours for online classes um, probably right? Should we be doing more number of classes uh, online? Should we be uh, getting our kids to do lesser number of online classes? What is the right time that a child should do online classes? If these questions are questions that you guys have pondered over the last few months, please stay tuned in because the next 30 minutes are going to be packed with an attempt to get an opinion from the people that matter the most. Our children. Uh, I'm Pooja Kedia from Schoolwiser and today I am joined by a very excited group of children ranging age 5 to age 10 from schools such as Heritage, Sriram, uh, Ravali, Sun City and Shivnadar. Thank you so much everyone for being here with me today. Can everybody just quickly unmute, say hi so I know that everybody's mics are working before we get started. Hi. 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 Shit. All right, lovely. It seems like everybody is all set. So I'm going to attempt to start my first question by asking a very generic question. Do you guys like online classes? If you like online classes, I want a thumbs up. If you love online classes, I want you to make a little heart. And if you think, well, they're just okay, we're going to do that. All right, everybody on your screens now. Okay, like. There are some children who are still making up their mind. Love, okay. So we've got Aranya saying love, uh, Sia saying like, Anaya, I don't know if you've got your hand saying something, I can't see it. Um, Shivansh is saying like, Tejasi says like, Anya says okay, Anhat says like. Um, I can't see, Anaya, I can't, yeah, like, okay. And Anaya K, I can't see you, your video. All right, so most of us, are quite happy with the current situation and like the online classes. Some of us love the online classes and then there are some that say, well, they're just fine. So the next 30 minutes I'm going to spend talking to all of you, um, trying to understand why you like these classes or why is it that you just like these classes and what is it about physical classes that you like better. So I'd like to start my first question with the little one. Aranya, may I please start with you? I would like to ask you, firstly, tell me how many hours in a day do you uh, do online classes? What time do you start? What time do you end? I can't hear you. One and a half hour. One and a half hour. All right, great. And do you think that's too much? Do you think that's too little? Or do you think that's just right? Right. Just right. Okay, lovely. So we've got Aranya who tells us that she does classes for an hour and a half and she thinks it's just right. Tell me another thing, Aranya. If you were to do classes for another hour, would you get bored or would you like it? Because you would end up learning more. No. No. Okay, that's a very firm no. Thank you so much for your response. Um, if I could move on to the other little one in the group, um, Shivansh. My, my next question is for you, and it's the same question that I asked Aranya. Firstly, please help me understand, how many hours in a day do you do online classes? Two hours. Two hours, okay, so that's half an hour more than what Aranya does. And do you like uh, the time that you have? Would you want to do classes for longer, or would you want to do classes for a slightly lesser period of time? More classes and less classes. More classes because... It's good for us, but less classes so that our eyes don't get stained. Oh, brilliant. Thank you so much. Okay, lovely. So, so there is probably somebody who's telling us that, um, you know, we should be doing more classes because there's more learning, but lesser classes because it is a strain on your eyes. Thank you so much, both of you, for your valuable input. Um, if the parents are around, the little ones can leave. It's going to be another 20, 25 minutes. I'm not sure if they'd want to stick around. All right. Um, I'm just going to quickly hop on to the next question that I have. My next question, thank you, bye-bye. And my next question is for you, Tejasvi. Tejasvi, thank you so much. Um, I know you're joining us from Canada from uh, Colebrook Elementary School. So help us understand the format of what is it that you do? How many hours of classes do you have? Uh, we over here do one hour so we have IXL. IXL is basically for math and 
we have the different strands in it like multiplication division addition and like fractions where basically in division and fractions um you have to find the equivalent fractions and all and then um we also have ras kids it we like have to read books and then we get these points and our teacher assigns different books every time we finish one whole and there you can you have an option of read to me and you have to then also one which is you have to read physically and one which is a quiz okay and so so also help me understand the just things like ras kids and ixl that you mentioned i'm so glad to hear these words because these are um tools that are now being used globally so i know that indian children children around the the you know my own group of friends uh friends of friends i know heard these these tools being used so that's fabulous are these more online tools that you use while you're doing online classes or are these um what we call is asynchronous tasks which is that after you've done with your online classes these are tasks that are assigned to you which you do in your time at home um it's basically a part of our online classes and, okay um, we don't I mean, every like we don't do a virtual meeting but we do this and so basically it covers all the subjects like reading and maths we don't have science over here not sure and yeah okay cool thank you so much for that so that's one hour of online classes i'm going to ask you one more question to jasvi so is there also offline work that you get every day and if yes um how many hours is, is that typically uh we only get like um virtual i mean like okay i can't hear you very well so jasvi could you speak up a little bit please we only get the period of the online classes like um so for one hour only not more than that we can't exceed the limit and right um, i also like uh i like the physical teaching better cuz you can basically l- listen more attentively rather than like virtual cuz you have to post it on fresh grade and all so there're like these apps where you have to post what you have done on the week and yeah okay great thank you so much i think that's that's been very valuable so we've got tejas who says that she would prefer physical classes um she does online classes for an hour and um she can't wait to get back to school is what i understand from what you just said thank you so much anaya s if i could come to you now um would you want online classes to continue after the pandemic is over or would you want a total full stop to online classes I would like them to stop because I like being there physically at school and I like going to different classes to do different you know um subjects okay so you would and, rather be in and I I like I like to be in the field and to do PHE and all the other subjects in different classes okay i i hear you and i absolutely agree with you the feel of actually being in in school going to different classes learning different uh, subjects when you're physically there is absolutely different from sitting at home in one place and trying to do everything having said that i'm going to um try and rephrase my question and ask you so if uh, in the future you have the option that instead of going to school every day you were to go to school 3 days a week and do classes online 2 days a week would you enjoy that it's at some level you do get extra time at home you get extra time with your parents do you think that's something that you would volunteer to do or would you stick to 5 days a week school i think i would do the online 2 days and 3 days um uh, school physically Okay, great. Thank you so much. I hope I haven't done anything to influence what your initial decision was. But here we have Anaya S who says she loves physical school, uh, but given a chance, she would possibly uh, lean towards blended learning because it does give her that extra time at home, which 
you can use in many ways. So, but things like getting up, getting ready, going to school, so the transportation, you also contribute in a way to the social environment because you're kind of you know not getting on a bus or a car and uh, polluting the environment. So those are little things that I think that there are benefits uh, for online classes that everybody should start thinking about. Um, I'm not saying I'm an avid advocate, but that's that's just something that I thought I should I should put through. All right, thank you so much for that. Um, can I move on to Anaya? Uh, you just, let me just try and see if I can get you on. Anaya, I can't seem to see you. All right, there you are. All right, Anaya. Um, help me understand, I'm candid and honest about this. How much support do you need from your mom or your dad or somebody elder in the house when you're doing I do not need a lot of support because sometimes there are connectivity issues because uh, the internet is very bad these days. So yeah, I do need some help. All right. And typically, let's say if you've got two hours or three hours of classes, do you uh, typically go to your parents and call them every 15, 20 minutes um, or does it happen very seldom? No, it, it's, it happens only sometimes, right. like I call them once in two days because sometimes I figure it out on my own and sometimes I need them. Lovely. And let me ask you one more question. So when, when you do face an issue, I'm guessing the first thing that you do is you try and resolve the issue yourself. Do you um, also reach out to your teachers um, and are they equipped to help you or these are issues where you can't connect to the class? So you can't reach out to your teacher. So what are the kind of issues that you that you typically These are the issues about? when I can't uh, connect to the yeah. teachers and the class and it right. says searching for networks. So sometimes that happens. So I have to ask uh, help from my parents. Otherwise, right. I just refresh the internet. Okay. All right. Our kids are learning a lot and it's so refreshing to hear kids trying to problem solve themselves. Lovely. Um, one last follow up question on that. So when you do get back on class and let's say you've lost three minutes or five minutes and you're joining a conversation that's already in progress, do you feel left out or um, do, you, do you typically manage to catch up? I manage to catch up because I see the recording. Oh, so there is a recording for every call every class that happens lovely yeah. great thank you so much for that so that's i think absolutely fabulous so we've got somebody here who um has started to problem solve on their own so very seldom and whenever that does happen does not feel left out because uh, there is a call recording there is a class recording that is there uh, for children who wish to go back and listen to what has happened in class so thank you so much for that naya um see so yeah, if i could now come to you do you think learning uh, during online classes is the same as physical classes in terms of the amount that you actually grasp when a class is on? Could you please repeat the question? I couldn't hear you. Yes, of course. Um, is your learning during an online class, is it the same as it was when you got a physical class? So do you, uh, as a student, learn as much as you would in a physical class? Uh, I don't think online classes, um, I think physical classes are better in terms of learning because on, in online classes, anybody can leave the meeting anytime. Like in physical classes, you can't just leave the class and go out and just do whatever you like because there will be someone to stop you. But over here in the online classes, nobody is there to stop you. Like you can just uh, press the leaving the call button and you will just leave the call. And then sometimes you don't understand because you've left the call. And some children are don't want to focus that much in class and they leave the call, then they don't understand. So I think physical classes are a little bit better in terms of the learning because in physical classes, one, that man can watch you all the time and she, you, there's no camera off and camera on. Like over here, if you want to eat your food or if you want to eat something, you can switch your camera off and man won't even know that you're eating anything or you're doing anything naughty. So I think in that terms, uh, physical classes are better. Uh, because then ma'am, you can't switch your camera off and uh, everything will go well because ma'am can see what you're doing and she can see that what you're confused with and she can help you in that. All right. So let me ask you another follow up question on that. So yes, what you've said is true that um, there is a fair amount of self discipline that you need if you want to attend online classes effectively, right? 
Um, do you think most of your friends and people around you that you know who have done online classes with you and yourself included, uh, do you think everybody has that kind of self-discipline or do you think children are fairly distracted? Okay, so if I want to answer that question, like I would take an example of myself because I really haven't seen anybody except of my brother. So when I'm doing my classes, I am focused, but sometimes like my dog comes and she scratches on the door and that creates a disturbance. Then sometimes my brother wants me to help him with a word that he can't read in his class or word problem that his mom is doing and he comes to me and he knocks on the door and I and the um, flow that I'm following, I lose the track of what I was saying or what I was trying to listen to when mom was uh, talking. So I think in that terms, if you can sit quietly and if nobody can come in the room, then I think it's okay. But if, you know, if there's somebody, if there's a little distraction also, you can lose out. All right, great. Thank you so much. And I think that's very, very well put. Um, it's true that if you're able to uh, kind of take these classes without any distraction, without any outside noise, yes, they can be very, very effective. However, uh, there are times that these uh, distractions are around you because you're in the house and that does become a problem. So thank you, point taken. Um, Anhad, if I could very quickly come to you now. Um, one of the key things that has changed with online classes is the way we're consuming content. And, and I know that for certain schools. So help me understand, given your school environment, do you think that the resources that you're using now with online classes, are they better, worse, or the same as you would if you were to go to physical classes? Some subjects like SST and science, uh, it's the uh, same. Uh, and for some subjects like uh, maths, there's a bit more than usual. And for uh, English and Hindi, I miss the interaction. Okay, I think that's very, very precisely put. Thank you so much. That's true. I think for languages, there is that interaction and that connect that you need. But I'm going to ask you, um, or, you know, you mentioned um, SST. So is there is there a bit of uh, um, exploration and geography that you do in uh, SST as well? Uh, we're not learning geography right now. Okay. So what, what do you do in SST? In SST, so like right now, our teacher is teaching us the chapter uh, Understanding Maps. So okay. she's shown us many videos and she's shown us PPTs uh, and uh, now we uh, have understood it. All right. So, and you think things like that are better taught online? Is that what you said? Uh, yeah, but uh, PPTs can also be shown in school, so right. I like physical classes more. Okay, um, let's say you're looking at a map and you're trying to read it. Do you think resources like, let's say, Google Maps, are you familiar with Google Maps? Yes. Right. So do you think those things come in handy and is it not an advantage that you're sitting on your computer and ma'am says something and you can't figure out where this country is or where this region is within India and you quickly go to maps and you look at it. Does that, does that actually as a, as a aid, as something that helps you or no? No. Uh, okay. I don't know anyone who has used it, but I do not use it. Sorry, you said you're the only one who's used it, but? No, I haven't used it. I don't know anyone who has used it. All right. So you, you haven't used it and you don't know anyone who's used it. All right. So I think that's, that's a very fair point. So languages, um, Anhad's view is that there needs to be that interaction for there to be that, that connect and that um, uh, you, you better kind of learning for things like uh, sciences, social studies, um, possibly online tools are better. Even maths, I think you mentioned, um, there are a lot of resources that are available online. And we heard they just talk about IXL, which is, I think, also a math tool. So there is a lot more in terms of problems, in terms of questions that is available for practice if you're looking at online tools. Thanks, Anhad. Um, Anya, if I could come to you now. Yes. And I've just seen on my screen, Bhavya has also done. Hello, Bhavya. Hello. All right. All right. Anya, really quickly, um, help me understand, are there any, um, uh, you know, disconnects that you have in terms of your uh, social interaction? So do you think that sitting in an online class, you feel a bit disconnected with your friends or is that not really something that's set in? I feel disconnected with my friends 
because when we in physical school we uh, get to go in breaks to the playground together we get to share tiffins and that's nothing in online schooling we mostly even can't talk properly because usually the boys are shouting on their voice so we can't even talk Oh. So tell me another thing. So you you typically have a chat window, uh, you know, with online yeah. classes. Do you use that to chit chat once in a while? I use that all the time. But in our you teams use now, okay. yeah. But before I used to use it. Now in the team where we take our classes, there the chat teachers are monitoring our chats. So chats are not allowed anymore. So we have to add them on WhatsApp, and that's really hard to find their number. So as many as we have, we can chat with those friends. Cause on oh, team okay. now we can't chat. And and I absolutely relate with you. Ever since the lockdown, I feel very disconnected. Been able to meet my friends, and I haven't been able to go out. And while I've had a lot of Zoom calls and virtual interactions with them, it is not the same. So I absolutely feel your pain. Thank you so much for that input. Bhavya, if I could come to you very quickly, um, we were talking a little while back about distractions. Help me understand, do you kind of connect with that? And do you think that virtual classes, there are a lot of distractions around technical glitches, dog barking in the background, doorbell ringing. And does that um, kind of impact your learning when you're in online classes? Yes, it, it impacts uh, Sorry, your, your audio uh, is not too good, Bhavya. Can I get you to repeat yourself, please? So, whenever it comes, it. Can you try talking again, Bhavya? We couldn't hear you very well. Uh, when when the doorbell rings, um, uh, uh, the people in our family have. Uh, a call, a phone call, and when you click on it, you can see who's come. And that noise of that phone call ringing uh, interrupts me when I'm trying to speak or ask ma'am questions. And um, we have like a lot of children, like 30 children in our class. So, and um, when I raise my hand, ma'am is hardly able to notice me because um, in small, small boxes, so many people keep coming that um, the, pe the people who ma'am can see, she calls their names. So sometimes I get unnoticed. And, um, and, when the, uh, and in between, some technical glitches come, like um, on a site that we've been using called Neopod, in which there are many games, my screen gets stuck on the same screen when everybody's started playing the game because it's uh, it's basically a timed game. So I miss the whole game as it keeps stopping. So we've been trying to fix this problem since a really long time, but nothing is happening till now. And in Zoom also, this problem sometimes occurs. It says on the screen, your internet connection is unstable. But then when I check my internet, it's just, it's just, um, it's working completely fine. So, um, and uh, whenever I open, before my online classes, I always check the internet and it works. And then in between, the internet just goes away and then when the light goes off the whole area gets black and and i have like a small geo that you can connect to in which even if the light goes it comes uh, your your you keep speaking and nothing happens these days the light goes a lot because of rain and it um because of rain uh, i all and the problem with this geo is all right, great. Thank you so much for that, Bhavya. I think you have echoed um, a lot of what everybody has said, but you've articulated it really well for us to understand. So yes, background noise, um, two technical glitches, two trying to uh, you know fight with things like attention. So a very, very valid point brought forward by Bhavya that in a class of 30 children, when there is a child who wishes to contribute in little boxes, you barely see that little hand go up. And even if you see that that little hand go up from an educator's point of view. How many times can you engage 
uh, with those children when you've got limited hours and you've got a curriculum to cover. So absolutely brilliant, guys. I love the interaction. I think I've got some very, very valuable um, thoughts from you and, and know exactly what you feel about online classes. So our experts, our little experts have made some very valuable inputs to summarize it all. I think broadly, uh, I'm very excited to say that everybody's kind of getting along with online classes fairly well. They, they like it overall. But there is that, that sense of, uh, you know, social dejection, if I may call it. Um, there is that sense of not being able to participate as much. There is that, uh, you know, distraction factor that comes into play. There is obviously stress, which comes with being this increased screen time uh, for the eyes. So all of those factors do kind of uh, pose as a, a problem or as a hindrance for online classes. Having said that, um, I'm sure that all of you, based on what I've heard today, are doing fairly well and you've become problem solvers. We heard Anaya K talk about the fact that she tries to resolve problems herself. And I'm sure most of you try and do that with parents working and everybody busy. Your first point of contact is you yourself to try and resolve the issues. So we've gone around and heard everyone talk about what they feel for our online classes. Can I quickly get a thumbs up, not sure, or a heart? for online classes, just to see if your opinion has changed after this 30 minute chat. All right, everyone, go on. Okay, we've got two thumbs up here. Third, fourth, fifth. Okay, and uh, all right, great. Thank you so much, guys. This has been an extremely, extremely exciting conversation, but um, all I'd like to say is that for all the parents who are looking at this video, if there is something that we need to learn from our children, it is to be resilient, to be understanding and to be accommodating. I think it's beautiful given the, the current situation, how kids have coped up, how they've kind of taken everything in their stride and how they've moved on. We at Schoolvisor truly and sincerely hope that you all continue to learn and make the most of your classes. It doesn't matter if it's online or offline. On that note, a big thank you to all of you once again. Ciao, be safe, be informed, be school wiser. Until we meet again. Bye-bye. Thank you for joining us.